It's not uncommon to get stuck in a rut when it comes to stitching lettering. You start out doing backstitch and just never stop, or you find out how lovely chain stitch is for quotes, but two years later, you're still doing it. But if you've been on my channel or Instagram for a while, you may have noticed that I'm a huge fan of texture and variety and learning new stitches, so today we are going to go through a bunch of options to spice up your lettering and give you a massive grab bag of knowledge for each new hoop. I'm going to cover a lot of different fonts and stitches in this video video, but they can basically be broken down into two different styles outline lettering and fill lettering. Outline lettering is for single line fonts, fonts that don't have much weight to the stroke of each line. There's a lot of fonts that are a little meatier though. You could still outline these font types and we will cover that, but it's also a lot of fun to fill them in with floss, so this is where we will get really creative with our stitch types. Now I'm not going to give full length tutorials on every stitch I cover here, namely because I already have. So I've put links in the description for the tutorial video that goes with each stitch if that is something you need. Let's get started. The first outline stitch we will cover is the most common one for lettering, backstitch. And don't go thinking just because it's so widely used that it's no good. There are many times when backstitch is really going to be your best option, particularly if you're using a smaller font and want clean, easy to read lines. Not every bit of lettering is meant to be an artistic centerpiece, so don't be afraid to pull out backstitch when the piece seems to demand it. For a bit of a twist, mm -hmm, on backstitch, try adding whip to it. Whipped backstitch is still fast and easy, but provides the added element of a different color or just more texture if you do it with the same color. It also really raises the thread from the fabric, making it look a bit more like couching, even though it's not. Over here, we're gonna do running stitch. That's not a super common one to use for lettering just because it's not a solid line, but it's an easy stitch that you can adjust however you please, so it does work. And of course, you can always add to it with that lovely whip stitch or even a lacing stitch. I'm going to do a whipped running stitch here. Getting back to another lettering basic, let's still use chain stitch for one of these. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you've probably heard me sing the praises of chain stitch, and I stand by that, but using regular chain over and over and over and over and over again can get old really fast. Let's mix it up with a few other styles of chain. Over here, we can do heavy chain stitch, which will give us this thicker, more textured line. This is a great technique if you want to make a few letters stand out a bit more than the rest of the lettering. Use heavy chain for the big ones and regular chain or even backstitch for the rest. Now, like I said at the beginning, you can also choose a wider font, one that would normally seem like it needs a fill stitch, and still just outline the whole thing rather than filling it in. Let's do that with the S, using another exploration of chain, interlace chain. Just like whipping, interlacing is another really easy option you can add to almost any basic stitch for extra color, texture, and interest. Some other outline stitches and favorites for lettering are stem stitch and split stitch. So let's definitely add those to the lineup here. Stem stitch can really be altered depending on how wide you want the final line to be. So notice here that I'll stitch the lines on more of a diagonal at the top of the T, then as it curves down and the line gets thinner, I straighten up my stem stitch so it also thins out. Split stitch is great for going around curves, especially when you make your stitches small. The final result can end up looking a bit like chain stitch, but it is much faster to sew, so that's a win-win. You can also stitch split forward or backward, although I usually teach the forward method. I'm gonna do both here to try it out. Don't forget, you can always add the whipping and interlacing methods to both stem and split stitch as well. Another great option for curvy letters, especially if you want to get a little extra color in there, is couching. Couching can seem a little difficult at first because it's such a different method than other stitches, but it's a lot of fun and it has a really unique texture since the thread is literally laid on top of the fabric. The more curves you have to go around, the more tacking stitches you'll want to use. Okay, for these last two letters, let's get really creative. First, we can use coral stitch on the E. Since it's a fairly small letter, I'm going to place the knots pretty close together, but I don't want them so close that it just looks like I did a row of knots here, because we're gonna get into that on the fill section. 
And finally, this stitch I'll actually walk you through a bit because I do not have a tutorial for it, Portuguese Knotted Stem Stitch. I chose the easy letter for this since it's a new stitch, but if you want something that technically still creates a line but also holds a butt ton of texture, then don't be afraid to try something a little out of the box like this one. We're gonna start by creating a regular stem stitch. Once you've come up through the fabric halfway through your original stitch, you're gonna wrap that thread around the first stitch twice and then create your next stem stitch. You can see how this creates sort of a double looped line with a little, it's not a knot, but it looks like a knot there in the center. And it gives some really nice texture. I'm doing mine really close together so that you almost can't see the lines in between. It just ends up looking like a row of interesting knots that you've never seen before, but you could also stretch this out if you have a bigger letter and more space to work it in so that you can really see the little knotted parts separately from the loops in between them. Alrighty, I think it's safe to say you have a solid number of outline options for your lettering now, but what about those thicker fonts that you really want to stand out on the fabric? Time for fill stitches. We're gonna start out with the most basic fill stitch satin. And I've put it on a fairly small letter here because it's just too easy, too boring. I'm already over it. But side note, if you're not pleased with the edges of your satin stitch once you finish, just backstitch a border around it. It'll look great. I do it pretty much every time. Moving on, we will try out the fill version of backstitch, which is Brick Stitch. Brick is basically a neat and tidy version of long and short stitch, and it looks great in blockier shapes like this T, as well as in a lot of curvy shapes. This one is really a go-to for people when it comes to lettering. The neater and more even you can get your stitches, the better it's going to look. And oh hey, remember all that whipping stuff from the outline section? Yeah, that still works for fill stitches too. I'm not going to do much of it here, but let's whip a little brick stitch and then you can play around on your own with every other type of stitch that you can whip and interlace. But what if you don't wanna be all neat and tidy and brick-like? That's where I bring in the cousin of long and short stitch that no one wants to talk about or give a name to, I guess. I call it crazy stitching. It's basically a bunch of straight stitches laid over each other in a single direction in order to fill in a shape. If you start going in all different directions, technically you're leaning into seed stitch territory. So this one tends to follow the flow of the shape that you're doing either horizontally or vertically. This sort of unplanned layering of stitches along a shape is actually done extremely frequently, not just for lettering, also to show hair or fur or texture on clothing, anything like that. It's really common. As far as I know, there's just not an official title for it, which is why I call it crazy stitching. Moving on, we are going to try some couching. Couching as a fill stitch isn't super common anymore, but I believe from my very limited memory of research I barely did, that it used to be a big thing. The fun part here is creating patterns out of those tacking stitches. Oh, and I promised we would get into knots, so knots. I'm doing colonial knots to fill in the H, but French knots would be the more well-known option. Lettering filled with knots is really fun to touch afterwards and not as fun to stitch, unless you love knots, I guess. One little note, when you're doing the edges, make sure you're leaning those stitches towards the center or you'll start making each letter bigger than you originally had it and they'll start running together. Of course, we must revisit my darling chain stitch because, of course. I feel like chain stitch as a fill for thicker letters isn't a crazy new concept, but I guess I don't actually see it that often, so definitely give it a try. 
We are going to shake it up a bit by doing my self-named interlocking chain for the H. You'd want to only use this method on a font that does have a solid amount of space in it or a letter that you're doing pretty big, as otherwise you won't be able to see the interlocking bits you've spent the extra time creating. So you can tell even on this H, it just kind of ends up looking eh, because you can't really see where I've interlocked it. You'll want to save this for a pretty big letter. Another cousin of chain stitch, rope stitch. Now technically, you could say this is still an outline stitch as we are only doing one row of it rather than multiple rows to fill in the shape. However, it generally ends up being a pretty wide stitch, so it's a great option for those sort of mid-weight fonts that need more than a thin line, but not a full-on fill-in. Just because you are filling in a letter doesn't mean it has to end up completely solid, and that's where blanket stitch comes in. You can stitch the bars of blanket right up next to each other and get a pretty solid coverage from it, but I want to show off how fun it can look in a more regular manner or, ooh la la, when you turn it into double blanket stitch by adding a second row. Finally, we are going to get into some of my favorite fill stitches, both a solid version and a more holy version. Now, my previous research has left me still quite unsure of the proper names for these stitch styles because there are so many different ones that I hear, but I'm going to refer to them as laid work and weaving. Let's start with some weaving on the T here. You're basically satin stitching first, but I like to leave my stitches a little bit apart from each other. You can still completely fill in the shape once we start weaving in the other direction, and this will make it easier to get all of those extra extra strands of floss in. I love the texture that weaving creates, and you can get really creative with your patterns and angles, although I'm just doing basic ones here. I do recommend stitching a border around anything you weave, just to cover up those ends. Moving on to a different version of a similar concept, we are going to finish this off with some laid work on the S. The more space you have to cover, the better laid work is going to look, but don't be afraid to try it out on shapes that are more creative, like fonts, rather than just on squares and circles. You don't need to weave your stitches for laid work, although I guess you could if you want, because you're going to add tacking stitches at all the connecting points. This is another stitch style that lends itself to grand amounts of creativity. You can use tons of colors, various patterns, different different tacking stitch lengths, you can add little knots to the open places, you can start by satin stitching the letter and then do all of this on top of the satin stitch so you have a nice background. The possibilities are endless. So next time you are adding a name or a quote or a curse word to your embroidery piece, don't settle into your regular lettering routine. Explore some new options and see how new colors, textures, and styles can really spice up your stitching. I'd love to see what you're able to create with all of these options, so feel free to tag me on Instagram and show off your work. As always, happy stitching and thank you guys so much for watching.